Okay. Um, I, I think it's fair to say that without ruminant animal agriculture, there is no sustainable food systems, period. Um, and, and actually all animal agriculture, but in ruminant animals have a particular ecological advantage in that they are supremely adapted to turn plant fiber into products of highest nutritional quality for human consumption. Um, basically, all ruminants consume a diet that's high in fiber, low in fat, low in protein of poor quality, and, and they upcycle that resource into meat and milk and fiber and other um, products as well as ecosystem services. Um, in addition, what happens within that rumen due to microbial degradation produces methane, whether that's in a um, you know wild ruminant or a domesticated ruminant. And so some work has taken place that estimates that there are comparable emissions from wildlife dominated savannas or livestock dominated savannas. So we've had these conversations as if there is such a thing as grassland with no methane emissions from the animals that are supported by the grassland. Grassland has to be grazed or burnt in order for it to remain productive. Um, I think we'd rather have it grazed because if we don't, then we also have an increasing fire danger from a buildup of fuel as well as other negative um, developments. Um, in addition, you know, basically m agriculture is the history of humanity modifying its environments to produce more biomass than those environments would produce without those modifications. And so that could be any number of interventions. And we have a long history as a species of using fire, for example, to improve hunting um, or to keep the understories of forests more open so that we could gather nuts more easily or so that there would be more wildlife there for hunting. Um, and then, of course, as we've gone along over the millennia, we've developed different technologies and, and knowledge that those interventions get greater and greater. Today, we can say that the production of animal source food from grasslands through ruminant animal systems is the only agricultural practice that can share the ecosystem all the others have to dominate it, right? If we're gonna plant a crop of canola or wheat or maize, we're gonna go in and we're gonna completely destroy the existing vegetation. We call it plowing or tillage. Um, then we're gonna plant this annual crop, single entity across that field, and then we're gonna harvest that. Well. Even when we do that over half of the biomass, the, the, the above ground biomass, over half of that's not human edible. So it's a resource that then even in that situation, we can use as a feed resource to uh, support animal agriculture and especially ruminant animal agriculture. Yeah, yeah, definitely. A lot of it just gets wasted now, doesn't it? And they when they take a crop for example like corn the the, the stem everything around it the skin everything nothing gets used well it depends right so some of it is going to in some systems it may all be on the surface the u.s has um, a long history over a couple decades of people trying to figure out no-till or minimum tillage systems in which that material is going to be left on the surface. It's going to be broken down. Um, so it's not wasted per se, but even there, um, I just heard someone the other day say, if we were to take these um, crop byproducts and, and compost them, 
mm. the emissions from composting them is going to be five times what they would be if we fed them to a ruminant. Yeah. And if we put them in a landfill, then it's 50, five, zero times. So okay. a, a lot of our conversations have been oversimplified, right? The either, the or, the, the acting as if these emissions don't come from a variety of sources. We only focus. And so even, even when we talk about sustainable production systems, if we're really having a serious conversation, we need to look at societal factors as well as economic factors as well as environmental factors. And too often, sustainability just devolves to merely looking at environmental and that, which can be dozens of things in that bucket, but that right. too frequently gets minimized to only looking at emissions. And it completely ignores a vast number of, of other factors. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I, exactly. When people are, well, I suppose the, the biggest argument that uh, people have against ruminant animals is exactly that, just the admissions. And uh, I, I suppose the next biggest one would be the, the land mass required to, to graze cattle, uh, which is not as much as people um, argue, argue with it. They really don't take up as much land as, say, a lot of um, crops and things like that as well. Well, yeah, a couple ways to look at the land question. Uh, the primary one is that they are assuming that there's some other agricultural enterprise that could take be practiced on the land that the majority of the cattle are grazing, right? In other words, in, in the U.S. at least, rangeland is counted and permanent pasture is counted under agricultural land. Okay. And so is the, the arable, the tillable cropland. Okay. So, you know, all, all ag, all arable land is agricultural land, but not all agricultural land is arable. Right. So, you, you know, cr our actual cropland is a small portion of the earth's surface and a small percentage, relatively speaking, of our entire agricultural land. And so if we were to try to till these in, in some places, they're called marginal lands. And I don't really like that, but that's the term. Um, those lands are more sub subject to erosion and degradation, um, you know, and, and it would not be good stewardship to try. That's why we don't do it. Um, <laughs> that these are crop, these are rangelands for reasons besides, you know, the cattle industry wants to graze cattle there. I mean, that's ridiculous. The, the 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 rangelands exist and the cattle industry is supported by those rangelands it's not that it's driven by the cattle industry so that's one thing number two is frequently people will try to compare the production from different systems and so they will say well look we can produce more calories from this hectare of crops than we can from grazing cattle on rangelands. So frequently they're not comparing the yield of beef from the similar land class, right? They're, they're, but in any case, and, and so they, they'll look at caloric yield, they'll look at protein yield. My point would be we're not talking about calories or protein with enough sophistication to say that you know, a hundred kilo, a hundred kilocalories from plants doesn't have the same metabolic effect on human beings as a hundred kilocalories from animal source foods, right? 